Well, after a weekend like that, I mean, I had to sport the Pitt uh, Pit Panthers rock shirt. I mean, what a run the last four days were for Pitt Athletics. I mean, basically seven different games to keep an eye on, seven different Pitt Athletics programs in action. And they did pretty well over that stretch of seven games or matches or duels or whatever you want to call their various competitive sporting events. Pitt did pretty well. They didn't win them all. They won a lot of them, most of them. They won some big games along the way. We got like a weekend recap, a last four days recap here on the Morning Pit to get your week started on youtube.com slash panthalaircom. Yeah, it's Monday. It's the Morning Pit. It's youtube.com slash panthalaircom. I'm Chris Peak from panthalair.com. You know the website below, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. The most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You find it all at panthalair.com and message boards that interact with other Pitt fan friends. All day, every day, Pitt fans are on the message boards talking about Pitt sports, and you can follow it at panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. You can join the conversation there. You're a Pitt fan. You want to talk to other Pitt fans about what's going on in Pitt sports. That's the place to do it. It's the best online community of Pitt fans that you're going to find, panther-lair.com, panther dash you see the dash right there you see it panther dash lair.com and then of course our youtube channel here youtube.com slash panther lair com we post new video content basically every day sometimes we miss on a sunday or something but we get new video content for you every day of the week monday through friday we have these morning pit videos we have press conference videos and post game interviews and highlights and things like that we have our weekly live show that we do every wednesday night at 8 30 p.m this one's going to be a fun one this week i think we are going to do it as a pregame show for Pitt's game against Florida uh, in Brooklyn um, as part of the, the preseason NIT or whatever they're calling that thing. Uh, but we're going to do that 8.30 to 9.30. Me and Jim Hammett, Jim Hammett will be here getting you ready for that game and talking about everything going on in Pitt sports. So, I mean, the game is scheduled, I think, to start at 9.30. Tune in here at 8.30, and we'll talk a little Pitt sports to get you ready for the game. It should be a lot of fun. And it'll be right here at youtube.com slash panthalaircom. And, of course, we do our live post-game shows after every football game. One more of those coming up. Finally, a noon game. Pitt will play at Duke on Saturday at noon. First and only noon game of the season. Panthers taking on the Blue Devils. Uh, looking to finish the regular season with a win. I will be live after that game. That's a road game, so we'll go live pretty soon after that one ends. And I got something uh, unique planned for that one that might end up making it a little bit longer than they usually are, but I think it'll be fun. Uh, we'll have a good time with the live streams this week as we kind of work around Thanksgiving. Uh, with the Wednesday night live stream and then the post game show on Saturday. You want to make sure you don't miss any of that content. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel on youtube.com slash panthalaircom. And then, of course, we always got to talk about home field. I've got my home field on today. Look at that sweet rock. I mean, he's wearing, he's carrying a football. We're going to talk, uh, talk about a lot of sports today, but he's got football in his arms. My, my son asked me today, he said, where where is that logo from? And I don't know. It's probably from like the 30s or the 40s. Whatever it is, it's sweet. And it's classic and it's instantly recognizable as Pitt. If, if it didn't say, you know, Pittsburgh Panthers, if you just saw that guy right there, that, you know, you, you, would, you would immediately recognize him as Rock, right? I mean, you'd be like, that's Rock the Panther and he's holding a football. And you would say, I want that sweat, that shirt or a sweatshirt or whatever you want this on. They make it all kinds of good stuff at home field. And, and, and that, I always felt like this shirt is really kind of emblematic of or emblematic of what makes home field great. It, that's instantly recognizable. Yeah, it says Pittsburgh Panthers, but the logo, the image is instantly recognizable as a classic pit graphic, a classic pit mark. And that's that's what they have at home field and it's for pit it's for like 150 schools across the country. Uh, and you can get it on t-shirts, sweatshirts, they have joggers, dad hats, bomber jackets, all kinds of great stuff. You got to go check it out at homefieldapparel.com. And remember, if you go there and use your promo code LAIR23, L-A-I-R, like right there, LAIR, L-A-I-R-2-3, you'll get 15% off your first order. So some of the best pit gear you're going to find, and you'll get it for a discount. 15% off with the promo code LAIR23. Go check it out. Homefieldapparel.com. All right, I'm going to ask you to set aside your pitchforks and your fire everybody on the football staff talk just for a day or two, and we're going to talk about an unbelievable run that Pitt Athletics has been on 
basically since Thursday. So Thursday to Sunday, Pitt went on a run that y- you don't get very often, but you, you get every now and then because they have so many sports. Pitt has, what, like 19 varsity sports or something like that. So every now and then you're going to have some overlap in the schedules and teams will play on the same day or there'll be a bunch of games played over the course of a you know short amount of time. And that's what we had here this past week. Thursday to Sunday, there were seven different seven different pit athletics events. And I apologize if I missed one. It was hard to keep track of them all because there were some really big ones in there. And some, you know, regular season type of things, but still notable nonetheless. And Pitt did really, really well over that course. Start on Thursday night. Now, I was at Acrosaur Stadium. You were probably paying closest attention to Acrosaur Stadium where Pitt was taking on Boston College. That's what we have the photos of right there. But while that game was going on, the men's soccer team was taking on James Madison in the opening round of the NCAA championship. They lost. That's a bummer. But it was one of the few losses. However, making the NCAA championship, great accomplishment for the men's soccer program. Uh, and I think when you talk about Pitt... I mean, there's obviously football and basketball, but everything else, it's been a grind to get some of these other programs achieving at a high level. And, and that's not to say football and men's basketball have always achieved at a high level, but Pitt has not always had that sort of department-wide success, but we've seen more of it in the last like five years, 10 years or so, and maybe a shorter timeline depending on, on the sport we're talking about. But men's soccer continuing that ascension with Jay Vitovich, making the NCAA tournament making the NCAA championship a definite accomplishment, even if they bow out in the first round. Football at Acrosaur Stadium, though, break a four-game losing streak, hold on, get a new starting quarterback in there, and win the home finale, win on senior night to beat Boston College. It's only win number three, and so it's it's maybe not quite as celebratory as uh, you know other wins might be. And certainly, I think after the game, Pat Narduzzi seemed a little bit he wasn't quite as uh, celebratory himself as you would think he would be after a win. Um, but, you know, it's uh, the way it goes sometimes when you have a bad season like this. But to be able to rebound, to break the four-game losing streak and get a win, even if it's against Boston College, you want to say Boston College isn't very good. Well, Pitt has lost to some very, some not very good teams this year. Cincinnati's not very good. Wake Forest is not very good. Syracuse is not very good. And they lost all of those games. And so just that that basic line, and we don't even need to talk about Virginia Tech or West Virginia, uh, if they had done against Cincinnati and Wake Forest and Syracuse what they did against Boston College, they'd be a six-win team. But they didn't. They blew it in those three games, which I think makes the accomplishment or, or makes the win over Boston College a little bit more of an accomplishment than it might otherwise be it can be easy to slip away. It can be easy to let it slip away when you're losing like Pitt is. When they come into the game, the penultimate game of the season, they're 2-8 and eight and they're on a four-game losing streak. To get a win and break that losing streak, even if it's only win number three in game number 11, I think it's a good thing. And it was a good start to the week and, and good start to this run, although the men's soccer game uh, ended before the football game. We were all kind of keeping an eye on it in the press box at Acrosaur Stadium. Friday night, men's basketball takes on Jacksonville. And we continue to need we, we we have to we continue to remind ourselves not to overreact to things. But they beat a team in a non exhibition game by fifty one. 107 to 56. Blake Hinson was toying with these guys. Guillermo Diaz Graham puts up 20 points and gets a double double against a team that was one of the best in the country in rebounding. Now, Pitt was better in rebounding. Like coming into the game, I'm talking about rebounding more margin. Uh, Jacksonville was top 20, top 15 in rebounding margin. Pitt was like top five. Well, I think th- their case was helped even more on Friday night, and Guillermo Diaz-Graham goes out there and gets a double-double. Blake Hinson goes off for 25. Bob Carrington just casually puts up 17. It was a dominant performance, another dominant performance. And I don't know about you, I can't wait to see this team play a real game. I, I mean, I'm really excited to see them play Florida on, on Wednesday night. And whatever else comes after that, whoever they end up playing on on Friday, I'm really looking forward to seeing them against a real team because, brother, if they have anything close 
to that kind of performance. And I'm not talking about the Jacksonville game, but any of their, their regular season games thus far, if they have anything close to that level of a performance against Florida, the overreaction is going to be considerable. And I think Florida just blew out Florida State, so maybe there's, uh, you know, th this is definitely going to be a, a challenge of a team, but, you know, maybe that says something about Florida State as well. It's going to be a challenge for Pitt. Uh, it's going to be more challenging than anything they've faced thus far this season, and I can't wait to see them take on that challenge. It's going to be weird, I think, and, and we'll talk about it more as, as uh, well, Wednesday night approaches. It's going to be weird to see them in a game where they don't just run away from their opponent and just, you know, walk all over them. It's going to be weird to see them in a game where they really have to fight all the way through the end. Although, you know, uh, who was it? Binghamton certainly gave them a challenge um, and more of a challenge than, or maybe Florida. Was it, was it Florida Gulf? Yeah, it must've been Florida Gulf coast. It went down to the end, um, gave them more of a challenge than, uh, than, than they'd gotten in the other games. But I think, you know, Florida is going to up the ante there. But a 50-point win, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good on Friday night. Saturday was a uh, a mixed bag, a little bit like Thursday. I mean, start with the not-so-good. Women's basketball loses the city game to Duquesne. Pretty questionable traveling call at the end. Um, certainly, when you look at the replay, it doesn't look like it was a travel that was called on pit, but it was called and ended up costing them the game. Disappointing. Loss for Tory Verde uh, to, to fall in the city game. You never like to lose in the city game to Duquesne, but it's, you know, I think an ongoing building process for that program, and Duquesne got the better of them right now. However, I think a lot of the focus and a lot of attention was being paid to the Peterson Event Center, where there was not a basketball game, there was a volleyball game. Or volleyball match. I always get mixed up on which sports are games and which sports are matches. And I'm going to come back to that point. My confusion and lack of familiarity. I'm going to come back to that point in a moment because actually it's 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 relevant here. But Pitt takes on Louisville. All right, Louisville is ranked number four. Pitt is number seven in volleyball. Uh, Pitt lost to Louisville earlier this season in Louisville. Last year, sort of the same thing played out. Pitt and Louisville split the regular season series, each team winning at home, and then they met in the final four. Louisville took that game in five sets, took that match in five sets. And that was one uh, that went really back and forth. Uh, I, I think Louisville won the first set, and then Pitt, and then Louisville, then Pitt, and then Louisville just kind of blew them out in the, the fifth set of that final four matchup. Earlier this year, I believe they got swept by Louisville in Louisville. And then now Louisville came to the Peterson Event Center on Saturday for the biggest crowd to ever attend a pit volleyball match, a pit, a pit volleyball home match, I should say. And Louisville won the first two sets. Um, and it wasn't looking good. It was looking like it was headed toward another sweep. And Pitt actually had a lead in the second set, and they blew that. Louisville came back and won that set, and it was looking like it was going to be, you know, not just a match sweep, but a season sweep. For Louisville. Until Pitt mounted the comeback. Louisville led in the third set. Pitt came back and won that one. Um, some resilience. Some back and forth battling in the fourth set. And Pitt eventually won that. And then they get to the fifth set. Louisville led. Uh, had match point even at one point, And Pitt was able to hold on and pull out the win. Huge win, huge upset win over Louisville. Although at this point with these two teams, I, I don't know if we would even call it an upset. You know, Pitt being seven and Louisville being four, both have very similar records. Uh, I think Louisville might be like 14 and three in the ACC and Pitt might be uh, 14 and two or something like that. I feel like they've got, uh, you know, two more two more matches to play as opposed to Louisville only has one. I think Florida State also has already played 17 matches. They have one more. Uh, I think they, they finish against Notre Dame. Um, but it, I, you know, I think with Pitt and Louisville, with what with what has developed over the last two years, in really what's becoming, I think, a rivalry, uh, where you've got this back and forth in the regular season, you've got postseason, uh, you know, history there now, and and I I'm sure these two teams would love to, well, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't like to see each other, but I I think we would all like to see them meet each other again in the postseason, just to sort of continue this storyline that's building, this narrative that's building. Uh, but it's it's almost like you know one of these situations where you don't even call it an upset because Louisville wins at home, Pitt wins at home, and then they meet in the postseason. 
And in that, that's how it went down last year. And the first two parts of that story have been written already this year. Here's hoping they get to see each other on a neutral court. Uh, because that that was outstanding on Saturday. And a huge win for Pitt. And in the ACC regular season championship, still very much you know out there. I think uh, Pitt is... I might have gotten the record wrong. Uh, let me look that up. I I said they were fourteen and two, and and I apologize if I mix that up. Uh, I know Florida State leads the ACC right now at fifteen and two, um, but let me bring up. Yeah, Pitt is fourteen and two. Excuse me. So you know, and and they've already lost to Florida State. So it's a situation where uh, they could still you know they could share. Uh, they could win out if they beat Syracuse and Miami. They have Miami on Wednesday and Syracuse on uh, Friday. Miami is okay. I think they're ten and six or something like that right now in the ACC. Syracuse is at the bottom of the conference. If Pitt can win those two matches, then they've got a chance to win the ACC regular season title outright. Uh, they could also split it with Florida State. Uh, you know, and, and Louisville's right behind them. Either way, this is a team with higher aspirations, I think, than the ACC championship, although they'd certainly like to add that trophy. This is a team looking to the postseason that should be able to make noise again in the postseason. Dan Fisher has reloaded with this roster, and they look you know, as good as ever. Uh, of course, it's easy to say that after a win like that. You move forward to yesterday, and it kept going. Wrestling bounced back. Wrestling had a pretty disappointing loss last week against Navy. They go to Lehigh uh, yesterday, and end up beating Lehigh. An upset there. Pitt, I think, was number, ranked number 23. Lehigh, number 17. So Pitt upsetting Lehigh on the road. Good win for that program. Good win for, you know, Keith Gavin just sort of quietly has this really productive, successful program just ch churning along. You know, volleyball, I think, has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, baseball has drawn some here and there. Obviously, the soccer programs, men's and women's, we'll talk about women in a second. Uh, those soccer programs are, are building a following. Keith Gavin just... Just keeps humming along, man. Just keeps turning out winners. And uh, that that was the case. And, and I think it was a good win for Pitt to bounce back from the Navy loss. And, and Keith Gavin even said it after the match, to, you know, after the duel, to talk about uh, he liked what he saw a lot better uh, in terms of the effort and the attention, the focus uh, against Lehigh than what they did against Navy. So good win for the wrestling program. And then we come to last night. Pitt women's soccer under Randy Waldrum. They're in the Sweet 16. They're facing Memphis, who I believe was undefeated. And they just blow them out three to zero. Three to nil. Three nil? Is that what we say in soccer? Three to zero. They had three goals. Memphis had zero. What a win for Pitt soccer. Making the uh, Sweet 16 for the second consecutive season. And this year, uh, arriving in the Elite Eight, advancing to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history. And you talk about coaches at Pitt right now who are just building something, really building something. Randy Waldrum's name is on that list. I don't think Jay Vidovich is far behind. Dan Fisher is obviously already there. But Randy Waldrum is, you know, as good as any of them. You know, we at one point during one of our live streams, somebody asked, uh, is Randy Waldrum now the best coach at Pitt? And I mean, Dan Fisher still got that title. But Randy Waldrum is, is really building something, has really built something with the women's soccer program. Uh, and now advancing to the Elite Eight and, and looking really, really good doing it. So if you look at that seven games slash matches from Thursday to Sunday, Pitt went five and two in those seven, uh, with one of those being the questionable loss in the city game on that that you know questionable traveling call. But among those five wins were a 50 point basketball win, a win in football to break a four game losing streak, uh, wrestling upsetting you know a, a squad that had a higher ranking than them uh women's soccer advancing to the elite eight and volleyball you know rattling off the you know the reverse sweep losing the first two sets and winning the final three to beat what's becoming one of their rivals in louisville one of the best teams in the country i mean what a run for pit athletics over those four days and and i'll tell you what's really cool about all of it all right, and, and this is something that I think is really cool about college sports, and it's something that I don't think pro sports, any pro sports can match. I mean, almost by definition of the, the structure of the thing, they can't match it. What I've always said is that often sports writers, sports talk show hosts, sports journalists or whoever will chastise fans who say we, you know, um, 
Steeler game yesterday. I mean, we we we're just not getting the ball to Deontay much, or you know, we got to do this better, or we got to do that better, blah blah blah. And it's a common sort of sports writer cranky retort to say, "Oh, I'm sorry, we. Oh, I didn't realize you played for the team." I mean, get off it, man. But I get the point. <laughs> you know, <coughs> excuse me. You're not part of the team. You're not on the team. You don't play for the team. You never played for the team. You have nothing to do with the team. You're a fan of the team. You might have grown up a fan of the team, but you know this first person plural is not really appropriate. But what I've always said is that in college, it kind of is. You went to the school. You paid tuition to the school. You are part of the school. And since the athletic programs are part of the school, you are, I mean, you can say, I mean, I don't, I'm not giving you permission. You say whatever you want. I don't care. But it's a little bit more appropriate, a little bit more fitting on the college side than it is on the pro side. You know, we, you know, we this, we that, because you are a part of the university. Students right now, you know, they're they're cheering on their classmates. You know, like like I, I if I if I'm a student and I'm in some class with Nate Yarnell, I say, well, we did this because guess what? We're both in English lit together or something. We're both taking a Shakespeare class or something. Yeah, I think there is more of sort of a first person connection. But what's really cool is how it extends out from there. That, it, you know, for a lot of Pitt fans, and I don't think every Pitt fan is this way, but a whole lot of them, maybe just the ones I follow on social media, like they are Pitt fans. Like, like Pitt fans, right? That's what they are fans of. They are fans of Pitt. And that could be Pitt football. That could be Pitt basketball. That could be Pitt. Uh, you know, women's basketball could be pit, you know, soccer, men's or women's could be pit volleyball, could be pit wrestling. And they're all ex- at just as excited during any of these. I, I I mean, I've seen people, I know people and, and people I've seen on social media, they were at Acrosource Stadium on Thursday night. They were at the Peterson Event Center on Friday and they were back at the Peterson Event Center on Saturday, three days in a row of pit sports events because they are not a pit football fan. They are not a pit men's basketball fan or a pit volleyball fan. They are a pit fan. And that makes them fans of all of these sports. And so for some of these things, I, I'm not the world's foremost expert on volleyball or soccer. Uh, and, and I think probably a lot of fans who went to the, the match on Saturday or kept up with the, the Sweet 16 match last night probably aren't the foremost experts on volleyball or soccer. Some are, but probably a lot aren't. But what they are is Pitt fans. What I am is someone who follows Pitt. You know, and I and I talk about Pitt and write about Pitt and cover Pitt and all that, and and it's it's pretty cool that it sort of leads you into you know for for Pitt fans it leads you into celebrate cheering for soccer and cheering for volleyball and cheering for all of these other sports because you may know nothing about volleyball, you may know nothing about soccer, or you may know some or you may know it all, but all that matters is that you are a Pitt fan, and I think that's. It, a really cool and unique element of college athletics that, that doesn't get talked about a lot is, is how that fandom extends that it's not just about football and men's basketball. And for a lot of the fans, it's about all the sports and they may only get, you know, the big crowds at football or the big crowds at men's basketball, but they get the crowds at the other sports. And they have the fandom and they have the following there. And and one one of these teams starts really catching fire, like the women's soccer program advancing to the, the, the Elite Eight, or as volleyball moves through, if they get to the final four again, like that fan base is going to be there. That fan base is going to be following and glued to their computers and social mediaing about it and everything. It's it's great. I I, I really I, I like that. You know, and it's something you can't get in the pro sports experience, uh, to just be a fan of Pitt. Because being a fan of Pitt has this whole world of things to follow. So it's pretty fun. So it's been fun over the last four days, I I think, to, you know, just watch all these different sports. Keep up on all these different sports. Oh, yeah, women's soccer is playing tonight. Or, oh, yeah, it's the volleyball. Or, oh, yeah, basketball. Or, oh, yeah, soccer, uh, football. It's fun. It's been a good good four days for for Pitt Athletics. And, you know, the last couple months weren't so hot. Uh, you know, particularly if you spend a lot of your time following football, but for the last four days, you got, you got some pretty good pit success that hopefully you were able to enjoy. So good run of four days. We'll see what the next four days brings because, or five days, uh, take it into the weekend. Um, we'll see what that brings, but, um, 
it'll be interesting. All right, stay tuned right here at youtube.com slash uh, Like this video and subscribe so you never miss any of our video content. We'll have Pat Narduzzi's press conference today, more morning pit videos throughout the week. Don't forget, we'll have a pregame show on Wednesday night, 8.30 to 9.30 to get you ready for Pitt, Florida. Looking forward to that one for sure. And then go check out Home Field. Homefieldapparel.com, promo code LAYER23 to get 15% off your first order. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning. Hope you, or this afternoon, evening, whenever you watch this video. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed all the sports that you got to see other than the Steelers. And uh, hope you have a great start to the week. Enjoy your Monday. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning on the Morning Pit right here. YouTube.com slash